Inside the IntelliJ IDE, we're now looking at the source code from our GitHub version control system. Let's imagine we're a developer making some changes to our code and we want to build and test it in TeamCity. The build configuration that we've defined is constantly monitoring for changes in our version control system and when it recognizes a change, it's going to automatically run that configuration. In the background, I'm making a small change that causes one of our tests to fail, and I'm committing and pushing that change up to our version control system. TeamCity is going to detect that change and trigger a build for it. TeamCity also supports a feature called personal builds through our plugins, which are available for most major IDEs. You can see we have the TeamCity plugin installed here. From this tab, we can remotely run our builds on a TeamCity build configuration. This will create a personal build in TeamCity that's only available to you, the user. Remote runs and personal builds are a great way to test your changes prior to committing your code. Again, we'll make some changes and execute a personal build so we can see what that looks like in the UI. With the plugins installed, we can also view our projects, subprojects, and build configurations queue up builds, and receive notifications on events happening in TeamCity, all without having to leave the IDE. Back in TeamCity, and we have two new builds for our project. You can see our personal build indicated by the people icon in the status description, and our regular build, which was triggered by the commit to our version control system. Now that we've improved our configuration, you'll notice new features in the UI for example, additional information is now available in the changes column. We also have a new tag for builds marking which branch was built for that run. An active branches dropdown is also now available for viewing build runs from specific branches. We can hover over the changes dropdown to pull up the commit messages and file changes that were introduced between this and our previous build run. The personal build will be hidden from the home screen view once it completes, but we can always access that build and all other builds by clicking on the build configuration name to view more detailed information about our run history. Let's navigate into one of our failed builds by clicking on the build number. Our failed tests are now visible from the build overview screen we can click on the test to expand and view the full information on the failed test. We can view all of our test results from the Tests tab. Here you can see the status, duration of the test run, and its order of execution. On either screen, we can use the dropdown to assign a test investigation to a user or mute that test if necessary. When we assign an investigation to a user, it will appear next to the username in the top header. TeamCity has a built-in investigations auto assigner, which can be used to analyze build problems and attempt to identify a committer who may have been responsible for introducing a failure. TeamCity can make a suggestion when a culprit is identified, or you can have the investigation automatically assigned to a user through use of the investigations auto assigner build feature. You'll notice that TeamCity was able to automatically identify and pull in the test data from our project without any additional configuration. TeamCity supports a number of testing frameworks out of the box, including the most popular tools for Java and .NET development. Other testing frameworks typically include reporters or service messages plugins that can report test data back to TeamCity to take advantage of the same functionality. If TeamCity doesn't support your testing framework out of the box and no plugin is available, you can still avail yourself to many of the TeamCity benefits by customizing your build scripts to interact with the TeamCity server through a functionality called service messages. In our next video series, we'll review dependencies and build chains, which are TeamCity's powerful take on build pipelines. We'll also show you how to work with build parameters and create build configuration templates. 
Later on, we'll explore some of the project administration settings that allow you to take advantage of features such as cloud build agents and storage, as well as configuration as code settings with the Kotlin DSL. Our technical and sales teams are available to assist with any other questions you have, so head to our website if you'd like to get in touch.